Now let's see what kind of distinctive logical relationship each of these statement connectives brings to sentential logic, starting with negation. When we negate, or as we can also say, deny a sentence, we use the word not or the phrase, it is not the case that, to claim the opposite of what the original sentence asserted. Take our first example of an atomic statement, which was, Ava loves football. If we discovered that this was simply not true, that, in fact, Ava despises football, then we'd need to correct our original assertion by denying or negating it so that it read, Ava does not love football, or it's not the case that Ava loves football. Going a bit further, we could symbolize the claim that Ava does not love football by taking our original translation of that atomic sentence, which was simply the letter A, and putting the symbol for negation in front of it, like this. Note that the tilde must always precede what it negates, so it always appears to the immediate left of the sentence that it is negating. Once a sentence is negated, it acquires the opposite truth value from the original sentence. So, if A is true, then tilde A will be false. And if A is false, then tilde A will be true. They are contradictories. This is a handy spot to interject our first look at a staple of sentential logic, namely the use of truth tables to exhaustively determine the circumstances under which a given statement, atomic or compound, is true or false. Here's a video by Professor Delaplante that examines the truth table for negation, also known as contradiction. Let A be the claim John is at the movies. The contradictory of A is defined as a claim that always has the opposite truth value of A. So, whenever A is true, the contradictory of A is false. And whenever A is false, the contradictory of A is true. There are a couple of different ways that people write the contradictory of A. We're going to use the first way, writing it in English as not A. But in textbooks and websites that treat logic in a more formal way, you'll likely see not A written with the tilde, that wavy symbol, or as that corner of a rectangle shape. What does the contradictory assert? It asserts that the claim A is false. There are a couple of ways of saying this, some more natural than others. You can read the contradictory of A as A is false, or John's at the movies is false, or it is not the case that John is at the movies. But the most natural formulation is obviously John is not at the movies. For simple claims like this, it's not too hard to find a natural way of expressing the contradictory. For compound claims, like conjunctions or disjunctions or conditionals, Finding the contradictory isn't so simple. And sometimes we have to revert to more formal language to make sure we're expressing the contradictory accurately. Here's the truth table for the contradictory. It's pretty simple. Whenever A is true, not A is false, and vice versa. Definition is simple, but the concept is important, and it isn't trivial when you're looking at real-world arguments involving more complex claims. Let's now look at conjunction. When we conjoin two atomic sentences, we bring them together with the word and, or one of the many English words that have the same force, such as but, yet, moreover, although, and many others. They all just mean and. Suppose we wanted to conjoin Walter Eats Bread with Charles Reed's books. We've already symbolized these two atomic sentences with B and C, respectively. If we want to conjoin them, we simply insert the symbol for conjunction, the ampersand, between them. And we get B ampersand C, which accurately captures the conjunction of our two atomic sentences. Easy enough. But under what conditions would such a conjunction be true as a whole? Well, only when it's true that Walter eats bread, and it's also true that Charles reads books. Let's prove this with the truth table for conjunction, as shown in this video from Professor Delaplante. A conjunction is a compound claim formed by, as the name suggests, conjoining two or more component claims. The component claims are called the conjuncts. The logic of conjunctions is pretty straightforward. Here's a simple conjunction pertaining to my preferences for pizza toppings. Let A stand for the claim that I love pepperoni, and let B stand for the claim that I hate anchovies. Then the conjunction of A and B is the compound claim, I love pepperoni and I hate anchovies. We want to know the conditions under which the conjunction as a whole is true or false. In this case, it's pretty obvious. The conjunction A and B 
is true just in case each of the conjuncts is true. If either one is false, then the conjunction as a whole is false. It's sometimes handy to represent the logic of compound claims with the table that gives the truth value for the compound claim for every possible combination of truth values of the component claims. For conjunctions, the truth table looks like this. Under each of the conjuncts, we list all the possible truth values in such a way that each row represents a distinct logical combination of truth values. In the first row, A is true and B is true. In the second row, A is true and B is false. In the third row, A is false and B is true. And in the last row, A is false and B is false. This exhausts all the possible combinations of truth values. The middle column under the AND represents the truth value of the conjunction taken as a whole. A and B as a function of the truth values for A and B in the, in the adjacent row. So in the first row, we see that if both A and B are true, then the conjunction as a whole is true. But for every other combination of truth values where at least one of the conjuncts is false, then the conjunction as a whole is false. We'll use truth tables like this one to represent the logic of all the compound claims we'll be looking at. Knowing the logic of the conjunction doesn't help much if you can't recognize when a conjunction is being used in ordinary language. Here are a few things to look out for. In the first sentence, the conjunctive form is transparent. Each of the conjuncts, John is a Rolling Stones fan and John is a teacher, show up as complete sentences on either side of the and. But the second sentence represents the very same conjunction as the first sentence. Syntax is different, but from the standpoint of propositional logic, the semantics, the meaning of the sentence is exactly the same as the first sentence. It's implicit that a teacher is a predicate term that takes John as the subject. Don't make the mistake of reading a sentence like this as a simple non-compound claim. Also, conjunctions don't always use the word and to flag the conjunction. In ordinary language, there may be a subtle difference in meaning between this sentence using but and the same sentence using and, but from the standpoint of propositional logic, where all we care about is whether the sentence is true or not, and how the truth of the sentence depends on the truth of any component claims, this sentence still represents a conjunction. But doesn't make any difference from this perspective. This sentence is still true just in case John is a Rolling Stones fan and John doesn't like the hoop. There are other words that sometimes function to conjoin claims together, like these. You can substitute all of these for but in this sentence, and you'll get slight variations in the sense of what's being said. But from the standpoint of propositional logic, all of these represent the same conjunction, a claim of the form A and B. One last point. Conjunctions can have more than two component claims. A claim like this one might represent a compound claim like John is a writer and a director and a producer of The Simpsons TV show, but he's also a stand-up comic and an accomplished violinist. This is still a conjunction, and it follows the same rules as any conjunction. Namely, it's true as a whole, just in case all those component claims are true, and it's false otherwise. As we've just seen, the truth table for conjunction gives us a rule for its use. A conjunctive sentence is true if and only if all its component conjuncts are true. Incidentally, conjuncts are commutative in the sense that the order of the conjuncts doesn't affect the truth value of the compound sentence. We can reverse the order of B, ampers and C, and it won't make a difference, at least not in sentential logic. As an aside, the order of a conjunction expressed in a natural language like English is sometimes very important saying he took off his shoes and got into bed is very different from saying he got into bed and took off his shoes. In this case, the order of events is important, so the use of and is not commutative. We can't reverse the order of the conjuncts without some, saying something entirely different.